machine intensive, we can look at machine hours. How many machine hours does one take versus the other? So we came up with a 50% of uh, labor and, and that's an arbitrary number. So that, that, I mean, that number we came up with, it's an estimate that we came up with. It has nothing to do with labor. Overhead has nothing to do with labor or payroll. That's just an estimate to make us see and see how large the jobs are. So what is happening here is we're putting money into factory overhead. We don't have any in there yet, but we will allocate as we go through this job. Those things will be allocated in here in this example. And uh, then we're going to allocate it from factory overhead to the work in process based on an estimate. And that estimate is based on direct labor in this case. So let's see what this is going to look like. Basically, what's going to happen is raw materials is going to go up by us allocating all this other stuff that we think is going to be uh, expensed in the form of overhead, all this miscellaneous stuff. We're going to apply that to the job uh, when we allocate the payroll to the job, when we allocate the labor to the job, because we're using the labor to help us do that allocation. So we have work in process here. Uh, it has a debit balance. We need to make it go up by all this miscellaneous stuff that we're going to estimate that is going to be into each job. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So we're going to copy the work in process. We're going to put that on top in cell C13, right click, paste, one, two, three. Now, how are we going to calculate that estimate? Well, it's going to be 50% 50, 50 of the direct labor. So I'm going to just say it equals the direct labor we just did times 0.5, 50% of direct labor. Enter. So we're going to allocate 109. Again, this has nothing to do with actual labor, payroll expense in this case. All it has to do with is estimating how much of all that overhead that we are going to uh, incur and just put into the overhead bucket we should allocate to each individual job based on an estimate that we have made. All right, so then we're gonna have a credit for the same amount, negative of this number, and the credit is gonna to go to overhead. Now notice there's nothing in overhead yet, and that's okay, we're gonna allocate it to overhead as we incur the costs, and then we're going to apply them to the jobs uh, based on a predetermined uh, estimate and rate. Okay, so we're gonna credit overhead, I'm gonna copy overhead, and we are going to paste it one, two, three right here. All right, so we're going to make this smaller, back down to 80%, scroll over here a bit. We're going to post this out. We're going to post this journal entry to the general ledger. Here's the work in process. Here's the work in process up here. Here's the work in process on the general ledger. We're going to increase it by the third amount that is in there. Remember, we did uh, raw materials, then labor. Now here's the work in process in U11 equals. We're going to point to this 109. That's going to bring the work in process up in the general ledger as well as in the trial balance. Then we're going to post the overhead. Here's the overhead here. Here's the overhead here. We're going to go to the overhead. That's like the third to last account right here on the assets. So we are in the credit side this case. So we are going to say equals and then in cell V25 point to the 109. That's going to make this account go in the credit direction. So it looks like we're overdrawn now because we haven't applied anything to overhead yet, but there's the 109 credit. Then uh, we also need to back that up on the general ledger. So we're going to scroll over to the general ledger. We have the 109 here. We need to back that up on the job cost sheet. So this is the general ledger. We're going to back it up on the job cost sheet. So we're going to scroll over to the job cost sheets over here. We got job 14, 15, and 16. So in job 14, as of the 116 in this case, we're going to go over to the factory um, overhead. And we're going to do the same calculation we did uh, in the journal entry, but we're going to do it by job in this case. So I'm going to say this equals the 30,000 direct labor we applied to job 14 times 0.5. And then so 15,000 of uh, overhead, we're going to apply there. All, this, all the other stuff, the bucket of stuff. Then we're going to go over here to AP11 equals the direct labor of 68 times 0.5. So we're just using the direct labor to allocate the overhead. This case, we have 34. Notice we're not allocating the overhead evenly. Idea being that the jobs are, are different sizes. Idea being that this job's a lot larger than this job based on the fact that there's a lot more hours being spent on that job. So then we're going to go down to AJ20 in the factory overhead column for job 16 equals the 120 direct labor times 0.5. So there we have that. And if we highlight the 15,000, the 34, 
the 60, it should add up to the 109 that we recorded on our journal entry. If we add up all the jobs now, we, we now have this uh, 760. That 760 should also be seen on the general ledger under work in process right there. It should also be seen on the trial balance under work in process right there. And so we are looking good. I'm going to make it large again and back to 100% on the taskbar, scrolling all the way to the left. We can see our next transaction now. So we are on 120. 120 says we have indirect labor paid and assigned to factory overhead. All right, so we got indirect labor. So basically the question being, is cash affected? And in this case, we're going to say, yeah, cash is affected because we're processing payroll again. So this is processing payroll. We're going to simplify the payroll entry and just say that we are paying cash at the time we process the payroll and cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy the cash, going to put that on the bottom of the date, right click, paste, one, two, three. The credit will be for the 14, negative 14,000. We will then debit something for 14,000. Now you might be thinking, well, we already did something where we processed payroll. Why are we doing this? Uh, that was direct labor. You told me that was payroll. Why is payroll down here again? Well, we could have processed the payroll at the same time, but the difference between direct labor and in this case, indirect labor is that the direct labor, we know that those are people that are working directly on the job. Indirect labor are things that uh, we can't apply directly to a job. So say we have a supervisor that's supervising a bunch of different jobs and we don't know how much time you spend on any particular job, then we would just put supervisor salary into overhead and just allocate it based on this predetermined rate that we had just, we've already allocated using. Or if, if there are things in the factory such as, um, janitorial service or, or stuff like that within uh, the factory, then though, you know, maintenance and all that kind of stuff of the factory, then uh, that type of thing, we can't apply to a specific job as well necessarily. And therefore we're going to put it just into this.